Hey friends, welcome back to Chronically Overdressed. I'm Christine the Glambassador. Today I am going to show you a super easy, simple way to do this classic poodle hairstyle. This curly poodle hairstyle is a classic hairstyle that we've seen on Betty Grable, Lucille Ball, and many, many other actresses in the 1940s and 50s. There are so many different ways that you can create this kind of silhouette um, using a lot of curls, using fluff, using, in Lucille Ball's case, a lot of frizz even. Um, and you can incorporate a bang similar to Lucille Ball's hair, um, or you can just do those really structured curls like in Betty Grable's hairstyle. But essentially, it's all the same kind of silhouette. So I really encourage you to play around with it and see what works best for you. Um, it's essentially all of the hair up in some sort of, you know, curly, fluffy, frizzy uh, mushroom almost on top of the head. And it's smoothed out in the back and generally smoothed out on the sides. So that is the basic silhouette of what a poodle is. Anything that else goes on top is just kind of however you want to put it together, whatever works best for you. You can um, incorporate waves or, or any kinds of um, swoops or anything like that. It doesn't have to be the structured curl, um, but those do take a little bit more time. And this one is going to, I'm gonna show you a super, super simple, easy way to create this using the curls from your wet set. Okay, let's get started with our poodle updo. I do wanna say we are currently having a bit of a storm. So if you hear thunder, if you see lightning, I see lightning, I'm probably gonna freak out. So um, I just wanna let you know that if you hear some crazy, crazy sounds, that's what it is. Okay, so I personally like to use my set, like my first day set for my poodle. Um, and I do this for two reasons. One, because the curls are already there. They're fully formed. I really don't have to brush anything out. Um, I can just use them directly out of the roller. And two, it actually kind of helps to preserve my set. So because I'm not brushing it out, because I'm not you know, taking out those curls, um, and I'm just kind of basically piling up on my head, my curls were, are going to last longer. And, and I've, I've done a poodle from day one, um, and I've actually worn it the second day just by putting a, a hairnet on it and it'll be preserved for the next day as well. However, if you aren't using a set to start your curls with, you can use a, a curling iron to create those curls. Or if you're doing it kind of midweek in between your set, you can maybe re-roll your hair the night before just to get a little bit more of the definition of the curl. Okay, so I set my hair the exact same way that I do normally. Um, I've got it this time in pillow rollers in the back and I still use my, uh, my foam rollers in front and I roll all of my fringe off to the side. I find this makes it a lot easier to kind of really create those curls, that defined curls in the front, um, rather than rolling backwards. Um, if you are gonna roll your hair backwards, that's perfectly fine. You just may need to kind of separate those curls out and define them a little bit more for this kind of front, you know, fluffy poodly section in the front. So I'm gonna take off my hairnet and see how my, my curls have set. And I like to do my, um, my poodles in sections. Makes it, oh, there goes some thunder, my goodness. Um, it makes it a little bit easier for me to, um, to manage rather than having it all, um, all of my hair down at once. So um, 
Let me just get these kind of rolled back up a little bit. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out the, um, the curls in the back and then I'm just going to gently pull them back um, to kind of get them out of the way because I am gonna concentrate on this top part first. Okay, so I've got all of the rollers out of this back section and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put it back in um, my hairnet just to, just to kind of separate it, get it out of the way. I do not want to brush any of these curls out, but I just want them to kind of get out of my way for a moment so I can concentrate on the top part. Okay, so we're gonna undo these sections here. So what I, I'm, I'm trying to be very, very careful when taking out these sections here, this little fringe section. I don't wanna pull the roller straight down. I actually want to kind of unravel so that curl just remains just like that. Um, also, pulling on the foam roller like that can definitely cause frizz. So we always want to kind of re-roll just like that. And this is a big reason why I like to um, roll my hair off to the side is because it just kind of creates this little bang fringe section already. So all I'm going to do with these is um, I'm just gonna pin them exactly the way they are. So I'm gonna take, take that section and I'm just gonna pin it right in as if I'm doing like a standing pin curl. I've got that front section here. Let me do this one a little bit better, a little tighter. There we go. There, so we've got this nice front section here that has all of the curls. And then what I'll do with these sides is I will gently, with a little bit of pomade um, or hair oil, or you can do a combination, which I think I might actually do. Um, I'm using the, the BB, the hairdresser's oil, just a tiny little pump of that with a little bit of pomade. I don't want to use too much here, but enough to kind of give it a little bit of hold and some shine. And then we're going to take this section here and I'm bringing it just up, just behind these other curls here. And I'm going to do one little twist and then push it forward because I want to create this bit of a um, kind of a pompadour here. Now, if you have thinner hair or maybe not as much hair, you can do a little bit of teasing here, just right here at the base, okay? And that will help give you a little bit more of, of a curve here. So we're gonna take this side here, twist it, and then we're gonna take our bobby pins. This hairstyle takes a lot of bobby pins, just so you know. And 
I'm just going to pin it right here in a crisscross manner here. So they're really nice and secure. Okay. So that's right there. And then you have this little tail of curls and because we didn't brush it out, it's just perfect and right there for us. Okay, same with this side. A little bit of hair oil, a little bit of pomade. I'm actually going to do a little teasing on there. And same thing. We're going to take it up, twist it once, push it down a little bit to give this little bit of height and pin it down. Okay, so then we can kind of separate these little curls and um, you can pin them down however you like, make it a little bit more fluffy here. But because we're bringing all the rest of the hair up, um, I'm not gonna do too much. I am going to just make sure that these guys are nice and secure. There we go. Okay. Now from this, you have a, a nice, you know, half poodle updo. So you don't have to put the rest of your hair up with this. You can leave it exactly the way it is. You can, um, you can put a snood on, you can brush the rest of the hair out. Um, and then you've just got this nice kind of, you know, half poodle updo just from that. Um, this is also a really great look, even if you just kept the rest of this in your hairnet and you put on like a nice platter hat, this works really well for that because um, sometimes having a full poodle makes it really hard to put a hat on um, just because of the volume, you've got so much going on up there, but if you don't have as much, this really helps to put a hat on and you've got this nice um, front poodle section here. But we are doing a full poodle today, so we're gonna move on to the back. And there's many, many different ways that you can create a, um, a poodle style or, you know, this kind of an updo. Um, this one is, you know, just kind of, again, use, utilizing the kind of the raw curl of my set. Um, but there's many different ways to do it. So I really encourage you to just play around and you know see what works best for you. If it's the more structured curls, if it's more like a Lucille Ball um, kind of frizzy fluffy curl, you can absolutely you know do it that way. Um, so this is just one way of doing it. Um, I am going to use my hair combs to secure the rest of my hair, but if you don't have the hair combs, you can easily still use um, bobby pins. I just recommend that you do two bobby pins crisscrossed, again, just for that secure, um, that security. And then I like to separate my hair into two sections um, because I do have thick hair and a lot of it. Um, this works easiest for me. This works best for me. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just separating it out. I'm going to brush this lightly up 
and kind of bring it up to a bit of a ponytail up to the top. Um, I don't want to be too, oops, I don't want to be too um, forceful with the brushing because I do want to, you know, preserve some of the curl in here, but here's what I'm going to do. So when I bring it all the way up to the top, I'm going to twist it once. And again, push it down. If you kind of make this section a little bit flatter, then you can go in and use your hair comb and just press that in, okay? And then do that to the other side. And you don't wanna make these two sections too far apart from each other because when we're done with both of them, I'm going to try to merge them um, using the rat tail comb. And so if you have, you know, one section like way over here and the other section way over here, it does make it a little difficult to, um, to merge those two. So you want to try and get them as close to each other as possible. So again, we're going to twist it once. And then flatten that out with your fingers and get that hair comb and press it right in there. Okay. And now we can take our little bit of hair oil, a little bit of pomade. as much as possible. And we have to go in and kind of readjust where the hair comes Okay. And then, so now you have this lovely group of curls on top and then you just start rearranging them and I I like to rearrange in the back so it covers this section here so you just kind of pull the curls you don't want to pull them too too much because you don't want it to create a bunch of frizz um, and you want that structure of the actual curl from the from the set. But then you just start pinning. Pin it where you feel it's um, it needs some security. You can pin the you can pin into your hair combs to give it even more security. So when you have your, your hair comb like this, you can just slide that bobby pin right over the teeth, kind of right over that. And that helps to really secure that. Um, although these grip tooth hair combs don't need a lot of extra security. They're already secure enough. Um, but if you feel like, you know, you're, you need a little bit more you can absolutely do that and then you just you just kind of futz around with it and pin it pin any like loose curls that um, you know that may feel like they're wanting to fall down and like I said lots and lots of bobby pins go into this style the more hair you have, the more bobby pins. Um, but yeah, it's actually quite simple and it's so much easier when you have this fresh set, when all these curls are just already made.
on the rat tail comb is really helpful again to kind of because you've got these sections you've got your um, your side sections and then the two sections in the back um, that rat tail comb is just going to help to marry those those sections together so you're not seeing so many um, separations in the hair so you definitely need a good rat tail comb so if you don't have the hair combs, um, you can still do the same thing where you separate it and you kind of twist it a little bit. And then right at the twist, right where you put the hair comb, you can put those two bobby pins. And I do like using um, kind of these, these longer pins versus for the, you know, my smaller curls and stuff. Um, I have these smaller, bobby pins that I like because I don't always want a ginormous pin just going in if I just need you know a little um, just for that little pin curl okay it really is as simple as that it's such a great idea to just utilize the curls that you're getting already from your you know the first day of a wet set or a heat set if you use that um, make it easier on yourself and just use those curls already. So you can see the back, it's all up there. The key is really to kind of create this shelf almost um, that the rest of your curls can kind of fall back on. And that's where all that shelf is where all of your bobby pins or your secure, your, um, your combs are. And then the curls just kind of fall onto that. So it really covers it up. You really, shouldn't need to see any of the bobby pins or anything like that because they're just going right into the curls. Um, but if you have a side, you know, like this this side right here, because of the way my, my rollers were sitting, kind of has this little divot. Um, so I could put a hair flower right here and voila, it's covered up. Um, or in the back, if you have a kind of a long hair, uh, hair flower you can put that all on the back and that way you absolutely do not see any of the bobby pins or the um or the hair combs or anything so you can do something like that you if you want to preserve it a little bit more you can put a hair net on um, or if you have one of these embellished hair nets these look fantastic too well, here you have it, a full poodle updo um, that you can easily do just from your first day of a wet set. So hopefully you are all ready for a beautiful and comfortable summer updo. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again soon. Bye.